Okay. Um, now, uh, one other, we talked about speed of the hard drive. There's also one other thing too to consider in hard drives and that is uh, cache. That's a very a small topic, but a cache, a C-A-C-H-E, cache, is kind of like a small RAM memory. Uh, most hard disks have a certain amount of cache in there, uh, 8 megabytes, 16 megabytes, something like that, that holds information temporarily. It's not much, but and it'll add a little cost onto the hard drive, but that's another factor in there too. Some of you have um, uh, MP3 players, or, excuse me, uh, CD players um, instead of the MP3 players. As a matter of fact, does anybody have portable CD players anymore? A couple of you? All right but don't use it anymore. <laughs> you have one, but you keep it on a shelf in a plastic case, right? Um, the um, CDs, remember how when you played CDs when you were jogging or something it would skip? Well, what you did was you paid more money for one that had a cache in it or memory because it before it played the song to your ear, it would load it into the memory of the uh, CD drive or the CD player and therefore you were hearing from the memory, not directly from the disc. Uh, that's a cache. That's what a cache does for you. Okay. All right. Uh, now, one other thing I want to talk about with hard disks. This applies to hard disks and floppy disks. It has to do with how the data is stored. And this is true going all the way back to the very first hard drive, very first floppy disk, and it applies even today. On disks of all types, there are the, these things called tracks and sectors. So let's say this is a, you know, for me that's not a bad circle. Okay, it's not perfect, but for me it's not bad. Um, you have, this is our hard disk. Inside the hard disk, or on the hard disk, you have tracks. These tracks are broken up into pie-shaped wedges. Now, there are a lot more than this. There are a lot more tracks, dozens and dozens, hundreds of tracks, and a lot more sectors. Uh, it's just, that's as tiny as I need to go. Each one of these sections right here is referred to as a sector. Each one of these sections call, is called a sector. Data is stored in these sectors and each sector on a hard disk or a floppy disk has a, and this applies to CDs and DVDs as well, it has a specific amount of data that each sector can hold. Uh, let's say uh, one megabyte, all right? Each sector can hold one megabyte. That's, it's different for every drive, uh, but the amount is not particularly important right now. So let's say you have a file that is two and a half megabytes in size. All right, that data is stored, start storing here, then it's continued here, and then it's continued here. Now you have another file that's uh, one and a half megabytes. Where does it start being stored? The next sector. This is left empty. You can't have more than one file in each sector. Okay? Now imagine this. Now, now remember too, that means there's a lot of wasted space on a hard disk. Look what we've got here. If this hard disk were only one, two, three, four, five megabytes in size, look what we've done. It's five megabytes, but we've lost 20% of it because we've lost this space and we've lost this space. So that's dead space. That's very true. Sometime when you're working on computers, if you ever get a little more advanced in computers, you're going to know that you didn't store that much data and your hard disk is full. Every once in a while that happens where your, the size of the file doesn't match to what filled up your drive. Uh, that does happen for that specific reason. Now, uh, imagine what would happen if we expanded this and kept adding in files, deleting files, adding files, deleting files. So we fill up these sectors and fill up more, then we delete some files, then we add more and delete and add and delete and add and delete and add. So now what we've got is we've got this hard disk where when we store a file, it starts storing it here, puts more here, 
Then it's full here, puts more here, it's full here, puts some more here, puts some more here, puts some more here. What does that do to the operation of the computer? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. He said it goes like that. Perfect. That's what happens. Your performance drops tremendously. It's because your files have become what is known as fragmented. Fragmented. There is an operation on every Windows computer system out there called defragmentation. Use it regularly. Use it every day, use it every week, I don't care. There is nothing on earth you can do better for your computer than running the defragmentation program. Here's what you're doing. Number one, you're taking all those files that are going all the way into the center of your disk. Your disk may have 80% free. You may go and say, oh gosh, I'm, I'm in great shape. I got 80% free space. And you go, but my computer's running so slowly. And my hard disk is running so slowly. Why is that? Well, it's because you've got files scattered all over your hard disk. You've got broken files scattered all over your hard disk. So what do you do? You run your defragmentation program. One by one, it takes each file and puts the file together. So you've got one file here it's in, in its entirety. Then it loads another one. And it keeps going round and round and round. And it shoves all the files to the outside, which does two things for you. Number one, look at the size of the sectors on the outside of the disk versus the size of the sectors on the inside of the hard disk. These are bigger, therefore more reliable. The inner ones are smaller, therefore more sensitive. Also, remember you've got that servo arm. Here's the motor and here's the arm. The arm is moving in and out. If all your files are on the outside, instead of your arm doing this kind of a thing, the arm is doing just this kind of a thing. So you get improved performance, not only for the speed that it's accessing it, but for the movement of the head and the servo motor on, your, on, the, on the arm has having to move less, and so you get longer life out of your hard disk. Yes? Where do you find the speed uh, You go into Start, Programs, Accessories, System Tools, this defragmentation. How did I do? Did I do that right? Ha! I get paid for something, huh? Okay. And moving on to the outside, don't you essentially create also more wasted space because the file is too small for the sector? You have that dead space in that sector. It's going to be dead whether it's uh, right. no matter where it is. I didn't know if it arranged something so the larger files were more for the outside, so it's a bigger. Uh, no, it doesn't do that. The only thing it does do is it takes certain operating system files and makes sure they're on the outside. Okay. That it does do because the operating system files are the one thing you can be sure that have to be accessed every time you turn on the computer. But typically those are loaded there on the outside anyway. Okay, questions about this? So we've got eight minutes. All right. Um, now, this, that defragmentation really makes your computer run well. Defra if you uh, haven't defragmented it, I had uh, one person in a class uh, yesterday, I guess it was, and his computer was running really badly. And at the beginning of class, uh, he it was a laptop, and I said, run defragmentation to start with. Just, I have a hunch that's a problem. He started the defragmentation. At the end of class, three hours later, it was still running. When I run my defragmentation program, it takes me about 30 seconds because I run it every day. I tell all my clients, or when I used to have clients, run your defragment program every single day. I don't care. It, it just, I mean, it's going to take you 30 seconds. Run it every day. Well, can we run it once a week? Fine, but remember when it's once a week, it slips to once every two weeks and once a month and so on. Okay, fine. Once a day is, is beating it up a little bit much, but you know, it's not going to do you any harm. Run your defragmentation program. If you go back and run your defragmentation program and it's running and running and running and running, don't be surprised. If you haven't done it in a very long time, it may t I've seen defragmentation programs uh, take several days. Uh, be careful. If you ha now, if you, have to, if you get impatient and need to cancel it, fine. Cancel it. It'll take a moment to stop and then reboot your computer. Shut it down and start it up again. But if it's running, it may take several days to run. But also remember, if once you've run it, uh, it'll only take a few seconds. Okay, for most of you, even if you haven't run it for a long time, it'll only take a few minutes. 
Uh, but him, he's been running that laptop for three years and hadn't done any defragmentation and he's one to delete and add and delete and add and put on software, take off software. It was running and I said, <laughs> I told, he, he, I, he said he's going to run out of uh, memory or um, battery life because uh, he didn't have his power supply and I said okay cancel it and um, uh, then uh, start it up again when you get home. It's not going to have to start from zero. It already did a bunch of defragmentation so he's just going to start it up again. But keep in mind defragmenting can really improve performance on your computer. Alright, another thing that you can do to improve your computer's speed is um, has to do with the RAM memory. Now we talked about RAM memory being a really important factor in operation or uh, inefficiency of your computer. Again, it can even be more effective in performance of your computer than a better uh, central processing unit. Well, uh, there are other things to consider here too. When you turn on your computer, a bunch of things happen. Your operating system loads, a bunch of other things lo loads, your antivirus program loads, and if you look down in the lower right hand corner of your computer, you'll see some icons. Some of you will only see two or three. Great. Some of you will see 12, 15, a bunch. That's bad. Those are called memory resident programs. Memory resident programs. You don't want to go nuts on memory resident programs. You can go say to yourself, oh gee, that's very, that's very handy to have these things running all the time. But it also slows down your computer. Probably the worst one you can do for your computer is um, those uh, chat programs. I can't tell you how many people I see that have their chat program running all the time. Oh, I want somebody to be able to talk to me anytime. Uh -huh. Well, um, you do that and you're losing a lot of hard, uh, RAM memory and you're losing a lot of performance on your computer. Having that uh, software running constantly just chews up RAM memory. Another thing, antivirus software, virus protection software. Okay, I know we have to have it. All these computers here have them. I can tell you that I have four computers at home. I have never in my life run antivirus software. I am not recommending that you run without it because I know what to look for. I've been doing this a long time. I've never had a virus. But I would never set up a client's computer without antivirus software. I'm not suggesting you do it. I'm simply saying in my particular case, because I know what to look for, I save myself a lot of RAM memory and get a lot more performance when I don't run my virus protection. I am not recommending you don't run it. I am just saying that that does chew up mem uh, that, uh, RAM memory because it's memory resident software. Another thing that does it, here's a really stupid one. Uh, a lot of people run um, screen savers. Why? They don't do any saving of the screen anymore. That was in the old days of computers or uh, monitors when they would, the images would get burned into the screen. They don't burn into the screen anymore. Why do we need screen savers? The screen savers are fun little toys, great. They don't do anything for us. There's one thing that a screen saver does and you really don't even need the screen saver to do it. You can just have your screen go blank and that is for uh, security reasons. When you uh, move, go away from your desk in an office somewhere, it goes blank after 30 seconds or one minute and you have to type in a password. That's the only thing I can think of for a screen saver. But other than that, screen savers are a, a memory resident hog. They chew up RAM memory for no no good reason at all. Okay? Another thing too, a lot of people think that because you have loaded a lot of software onto your computer and you have a bunch of icons on your desktop, that's taking up RAM memory. Wrong. As long as they are not memory resident software, it's not taking up RAM memory. Maybe taking up a lot of hard disk space, but not RAM memory. The last thing in RAM memory is all kinds of things, little things that you may not consider. The biggest one is background. A lot of people like to have these real fancy pictures or pictures of their boyfriends or girlfriends or what have you on their background. Okay, fine, I understand it. That chews up RAM memory. Again, memory resident stuff. Anything that's memory resident is going to chew up hard disk space. Okay? So when you're loading your uh, computer or laptop or you get it from the factory and has all these icons down at the bottom, remember all that is chewing up RAM memory and slowing down the performance of your computer. Okay. Um, and um, oh, also, some of you, do any of you have Palm Pilots? No, none of you? Palm Pilot is another one. People have these Palm Pilots and run this software for the Palm Pilot that runs all the time. 
you only need the software running when you're actually loading Palm software or downloading information from your Palm, Palm Pilot or from the computer, vice versa. That's another one that chews up a lot of space.